So, and I feel like this only gets asked of women, but <laughs> how do you balance it all with, you have two small kids, a husband who's got a big job, mm-hmm. he's got his own law firm, mm-hmm. and you've got a big job. How does it all work at the end of the day? Yeah, um, I think you could probably ask him the same question, so it's totally, not yeah. totally female-centric. And I, I say my husband loves to do laundry and the dishes and stuff, so he definitely takes on more of that role. <laughs> Um, it's, it's a partnership. And yeah. so, um, he's amazing. He's home when I'm traveling, um, early and he leaves super early and we have other outside help as well. That's nice. Yeah. Um, we actually moved from the city back to where I'm from. So both of our parents are close to us as well. Yeah. It takes a village. It that's really for sure. does. Yes. Um, but beyond that, I think the work-life balance, like once I get that figured out, I'll call you back. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure that out. I just do the best I can. Um, and certainly there's times where I'm more focused on work um, than I am at home. And when I need to right side it, you know, I just try and spend quality time with my husband and my kids um, as much as I can. Yeah. And, you know, at night, try and put that phone away. I was just going to ask you, yeah, do you put the phone down when you go home? I try. Um, You know, if I start to take a picture of them and then I get lost in my emails, yeah, yeah, I'm guilty of it. Yeah. But um, I really try and give the time between, you know, dinner and and them going to bed the most attention I possibly can. And then when we go on any kind of like family trips, it's all about them and yeah being really and I think that helps too yeah and they know then I mean they're they're used to this life too they don't know a different one where you know they have a stay-at-home mom so I'm kind of fortunate with that you know having them see me in this role hopefully this is something that will translate to them and they can see themselves as inspired by it yeah mm -hmm, hardworking and dedicated to their profession and um Little bosses themselves. <laughs> I love that, little bosses. All right. So this is kind of a different t- turn in the po- podcast. But so this is where I read some boneheaded things that men have said in business and kind of get your reaction. <laughs> so this is, I, I won't even say the company, but there was a woman that was standing next to a group of male executives at the company. And they were complaining because of hiring young women because they're just going to get themselves pregnant again and again. <laughs> so, um, first I just want to say, you know, men are part of this, right? They're, yes. they're part of women in leadership. They're part of women at work. Totally. Um, I've had great male sponsors. And right. this is not, by the way, this segment is not meant to call out. Well, it is meant to call them out, but not to, meant to be disparaging to men, but mm-hmm. to make call out what's happening, talk about it in in sort of like a humorous way. I mean, this was actually said. Yeah. And so let's call it out. Let's have a conversation about it. And and it doesn't mean that we don't like men or men are not part of it. Yeah. I think, you know, they're just as culpable. You know, I don't think the women are getting pregnant by themselves. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, they have some shared um, accountability there. Yeah. But um, diversity in thought, diversity in age, diversity in background, diversity in gender, all lead to a stronger workforce. They provide more creativity. Companies that have that diversity show um, stronger sales. And Yeah, this is science. I mean, there's studies behind this. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And so if if I were to see that, I would wonder, you know, like, would you say that to your daughter? Right. Would you say that to your son? Like, oh, they only will want her because she's, you know, post having her kids. Right. No, that's that's how we support one another. We help people through the maternity leave, and then you find out that that person is even better than when they started because they have a new perspective. They're yeah. coming with, you know, a, a desire for a legacy. They're coming with a desire to serve. Much like exactly like you said, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It sort of gave you more, more drive and oomph. Yeah, you know that saying. Um, you want someone to do something, give it to someone that's really busy. Yeah, yeah. And they'll get it done. Yeah, give it to mom. Right. <laughs> it's like she's organizing her life. She's making sure that there's support um, with the village that surrounds her to take care of her kids while she's working. She, all the things that she and he together or whatever the couple looks like yeah. to support their family. Um that's the person that I want to come in and take all the details that I have Absolutely. in a marketing organization yeah. and and put them together in a nice streamlined, easygoing process. Yeah, right? 
Yeah. And my experience is that, of course, women need to leave when they have children, but they usually come back and it's, they pick up where they left off. And to your point, they're even more motivated and have even more of a desire to give back in a different way and, you know, get out of the house and brush their teeth and that sort of stuff. So I, I've seen the, seen the same thing that you're saying. Where and they talk come back. about accountability. Yeah. I mean, that goes through the roof. All of a sudden you're providing for a family. You're not providing for one person where you can kind of just pick up and go. Yeah. Um, I see people actually investing more in their career and deciding to go deeper as opposed to being a surface. Yeah. Um, I'm actually really proud. This is was not planned, but we have a fully female marketing organization. There's a dozen women on my team. Oh, my gosh. And um, it's growing. Their families are growing. I'm delighted for them to have work-life um, balance and to be able to test what that looks like for themselves. And hopefully I'm showing a good example. Yeah, yeah. You I know? love that. And... Um, it, we're all going through that part together. Yeah. And how loyal do you think they are once you take care of them through that time and, you know, do them right when they do have to take time off for their family? I mean, I think the employees come back even more loyal and more dedicated to the organization. That, that's my goal. That's my hope. Yeah. Is, um, I can be super dedicated and connected to my family and I can go to a two-year-old, um, you know, dance recital and yeah. come right back and work at night or do what I need to do to get it done. Um, and then they can too. So you have an all-female marketing team. I love that. Okay, cool. Okay, one more boneheaded thing. So this is from a startup, startup that actually became a huge public company. And so one of the things the co-founder says, with the, says was that they did not want to have a female considered a co-founder because having that title was taking away from the other co-founders and making the company seem like a joke because they had a young female as a co-founder even though they were an actual co-founder. Hmm. How would you handle that? Uh, a throat punch comes to mind. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I, that's why I, I want to call out things, statements like this because this is, you know, in the last few months, this is not said 30 years ago. Right. And so people are still thinking that way. There's still that bias. It's, um, I guess, unfortunate because I see such strong women in business. Yeah. And they are such contenders against the guys um, that, to me, that whole gender thing, sometimes we spend so much time on it. And yeah. It's, like, it's not even in your orbit because you're not really necessarily experiencing it. It's like, yeah. guys, like we're we're moving this company from hero, you know, from zero to hero. Yeah. Let's, let's focus on that, not whether or not she gets her name on this. Yeah. And, you know, she might be able to leverage different funding than all of, you know, he can because there's someone at the bank that is a she. So Absolutely. you just don't know. Yeah. Good. Well, thanks for thanks for playing. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't too awkward. But I mean, like I said, these are things that are actually said. I have some that are from Fortune 500 companies and I think it's important to talk about. And a lot of them came back to actually apologize after they said these boneheaded oh, things yeah. because they realize it after the fact. But I think it's important to to talk about it. But to your point, I have had good male sponsorship along the way. And quite frankly, I couldn't have gotten to where I got without that. So I do think they are part of the conversation. Yeah, I do too. I think that we rely on our partners at home and then in the workplace, Yeah, no matter what they look like and what gender they are. So, you know, developing that relationship home and at work, it's, it's important. 